so we're talking to um, Charlotte in Australia um, tonight. And Charlotte's been working in a ski resort in Australia. The season's just finished. Um, tell us about yourself, Charlotte. Where are you from? Where do you work? And uh, what's, your, what's your season been like? Um, so I'm originally from the UK. Um, however, I've moved over to Australia for the past six years, working in Perisher, which is based in Jindabyne. Um, where I've been a ski instructor and progressed to be a ski school supervisor for our children's ski programs. Um, yeah, so I've just moved back up to Sydney. The season has finished. Um, looking for the next thing, really. Okay. And what's, um, what's been the effect of the pandemic on, the, on Parisha then? Has it affected the season at all? Have you been open all season? Yes, yeah, so we've definitely stayed open all season. We had a slightly delayed start um, due to um, isolation and things like that. However, we were able to open pretty much on the 1st of October, uh, July, sorry, July. Um, and we are still open currently and we aim to stay open until the long weekend in October. No way. Is that an unusually long season because of the snowfall there? It, we, we try to always stay open until the October long weekend. However, it is snow dependent, um, but we have the school holidays in October and we've still got plenty of snow. So we're doing pretty well this year. Okay, cool. And what was the effect of the pandemic on, in, on this, in the ski resort? How did they cope with that? Or what changed because of COVID this summer in Australia? So for us at Perisher, we reduced the number of ticket sales that we, we released each, um, each month and each week. We took it stage by stage. Um, everything had to be pre-ordered online. You couldn't purchase things in store. Um, we extended all our lift lines. We introduced face coverings that were mandatory while you're on Perisher premises. Um, we installed hand sanitizer and safety things all around the resort and we had COVID marshals helping us make sure everyone stayed safe. Um, but pretty much most things tended to stay normal. We, we introduced a, new, a couple of new things that were really cool. We reduced lesson sizes to make them smaller, which became a lot more personal for families. So that was really nice. Um, one of the biggest things we took away this year was daycare and our youngest program that's from three to five year olds. We, we moved that all over to private lessons. So they're more one-on-one -on -one okay. with just an instructor. And, and, and was it busy? Did people still go or, or what, you know, was it, were they over the ticket Absolutely. sales? Yeah. We okay, stayed so busy pretty much the entire season. Wow, and the people didn't mind the queuing, the longer queues or the extra space or the masks or the people? people no, we were, we were opened at 100% um, capacity. So all of our lifts were still running. Um, we just reduced the amount of people that could come into the resort. So if you had a ticket, you could come to the resort, um, which this helped with our lift lines. There, there was only a few days that were pretty busy. Uh, with big, big lift lines, but apart from that, everything was really good. Okay, cool. And what about in the um, in the ski school? How did it affect? You said the group sizes were reduced. What were they before, and what did you? How did you? What did you reduce them to? So in our ski school, we tend to have classes of about eight children in our um, parish of kids program. This year, we kept them down to fives and sixes. Um, and then for our younger guests from three to five year olds, we introduced a Ripperoo private. Um, and that was just like a one on one private with an instructor where a parent was there the entire time to be able to help the instructor with things like gloves, goggles, um, picking the children up and things like that. Okay, cool. And for the instructors, did anything change much? Were they, were they, were they fairly happy through the season or? Are they busy? 
Yep, so our instructors have stayed incredibly busy throughout the season. Um, we made sure that where there wasn't instructing work, we gave them other duties to, to make sure that they still could make rent and things like that. So everyone stayed relatively busy. We filled our training calendar with lots of training days and we were able to have um, APSI exams. So that gave a lot of people some incentive to keep training and working hard towards their professional development. But yeah, okay. everyone was pretty right, busy. Cool. So pretty good season overall. Overall, it was a great season. Um, despite the pandemic, we, we did really, really well to keep our season going. Um, and kept everybody safe. And did the instructors have to do testing or temperature testing or anything like that through the season? Every morning before work at the start of the season, you had to tick off whether you felt sick or if you had, were showing any symptoms. Um, if you were showing any symptoms, you were required to get a COVID test. Um, and this was covered by Parisha Ski School, so you didn't lose out on any pay. You were able to take those days off to recover if you had okay. the COVID test, and then you were able to return back to work once your negative results came back. Okay, great. Well, um, Charlotte, thank you very much um, for that. It sounds like it sounds like the season went fairly well where you were in Australia. So. Yeah, enjoy your um, bit of summer before you come back to come back to Zermatt. I we'll look forward to seeing you then. Definitely, can't wait. Okay, hey, um, great to see you, Harry. Um, just for the people, for the viewers, who just introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about who you are, where you are, and um, the New Zealand season that's just that's just finished. Is it still going in New Zealand, or is it all closed? Now? Still going. Still going. You're yes. still skiing in New Zealand. Yes. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Go for it. So who's who's who, who's Harry McFadden? Awesome. Thanks, Julian. So my name's Harry McFadden, and I work uh, for the Rookie Academy in New Zealand, which is a ski training company. Uh, I'm a trainer and examiner for the NZSAA, the New Zealand Snow Sports Instructors Alliance, and I'm a member of the New Zealand technical team which is a team of ski instructors that work throughout snow sports schools uh, in New Zealand, training and developing staff and uh, ski instructors to be uh, better. And I know Julian, because I spent three years in Verbia uh, between 2012 and 2015. Working for ES? Yes, yeah. working for ES, exactly. And it was a great Happy, time. Yeah. Great time. Happy times. Cool. So how, how has the season been in general in New Zealand? <clears throat> so the New Zealand ski season has been very, very interesting. Uh, it opened, Cardrona usually opens first weekend of June. And that's the main kind of ski resort in the Southern Lakes region, which is where I live, second bottom half of the South Island. And they opened late because they did not have as much time to do summer maintenance as uh, New Zealand was in lockdown for April and May. And we were all very nervous. We had no idea what was going to happen. We were told that potentially no one was going to get any work. Uh, the resorts were going to be very quiet. You know, there was just going to be nothing on. And the resorts potentially might only be able to open weekends. It was all very doom and gloom. And then what happened was, is on the 26th of June, uh, the mountains opened, the people came, and it didn't stop. It did not stop. It was one of the busiest, craziest starts of the season ever. The July 2020 was 5% up on skier numbers from July 2019, which was un an unbelievable start. Wow. And what about the rest of the season? Did it stay busy? It stayed, it stayed very busy consistently up until about a week ago, and now it has quietened down a lot. We had a slight hiccup in August when we had an uh, unfortunate COVID flare-up in Auckland, 
but uh, it still stayed reasonably busy because there were a lot of families that actually decided to come for the whole season. There were a lot of families who learnt through uh, working during the lockdown that they could work and communicate with their businesses over email, Zoom, etc. So they realised that living in the mountains would be a really nice thing to do, especially after the kids maybe have been cooped up in an apartment in central Wellington or something like that for a few months. And they came down and there's been a lot of kids in full season programs. I mainly work on adult advanced camps, so five-day adult ski improvement camps up at Treble Cone for Rookie Academy. And uh, they have been, we thought we were going to have not very few numbers. and this year and they've been very busy with people doing multiple weeks and it's been really good. Right and how did the COVID affect the operation of the ski resort? What changes did they make on the hill to cope with the pandemic? Okay so at the start of the season as you guys probably have seen because it was shown all around the world, New Zealand was COVID free at the start of the season. And everyone completely relaxed and went completely back to the old normal, you might call it. And unfortunately, somehow COVID slipped through the cracks and there was quite a serious outbreak in New Zealand. And Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern brought in some serious restrictions for any uh, large gatherings, which ski resorts fell into. So the ski resorts closed for one day and they implemented the COVID plan, which the Ski Areas Association of New Zealand, which is a board of which all the major ski areas are members of, they had created for if COVID was around when the mountains actually opened. So they implemented these rules, which I can send through to you, Julian, so you can see. But what they did was, is they worked out, ski resorts are naturally socially distanced. So the actual act of skiing around the mountain is very safe and everyone's covered up. But then they worked on potential choke points, you might say, like lift ticket queues, going into cafes and restaurants and the queues for lifts itself and buses. Because in New Zealand, we bus to the mountain or drive to the mountain. We have very little accommodation on resort. There's one hotel at Cadrona, but that's it. And they distanced everything in the lift ticket, in the queues to buy lift tickets. The cafes, you had to scan into the cafe with the uh, New Zealand COVID tracer app, and they were limited to 100 people per cafe with one door in, one door out. Uh, There were no self-service anymore in the cafes. In the traditional self-service style cafes, you would just walk up and have a look and then ask a uh, employee there to get it and then bring it to your table. So, and then the on-mountain restaurants were pretty much the same because you're used to having table service at those. However, the tables were further spaced and the uh, you had to queue at the door at a distance, and then they would come and get you and bring you in and sit you down. Uh, but to be honest, the cafes have worked very well. It may take a little bit longer in certain situations. <clears throat> and I know some ski areas are utilizing their RFID ski passes. So whenever you walk into a certain cafe or anywhere, you scan in with your pass, scan out with your pass. Because from a contact tracing point of view, they believe that ski passes are a very good tool. Because if you scan in, scan out everywhere, they know where everyone's been. They know every time you rode a lift, they know every time you went into a cafe. So that's how they managed the people tracking, you might say. And then for... Okay, and how, did, how did it affect... Sorry, go on. And then ski lifts. <clears throat> the ski lifts itself, they, <clears throat> the queues appeared a lot longer than they actually were because you'd have to ski in and you could only queue in the queue with your family or the people that you are with and around. So when I was teaching, I queued with the people I was teaching and obviously I had all of their details just in case we had an issue. 
but each group had to be 1.5 meters apart. It was quite easy. Everyone just managed it with ski poles. And they would load the lifts in your groups at one point. However, they realized that it was getting very, on busy days, it was really hard to manage. So the Ski Area Association of New Zealand brought out a different ruling. They could load the chairs at full capacity if everyone had a face covering over mouth and nose. And that's what we've been doing so far in the last few weeks. Everyone covers their mouth and nose and they can load everything at full capacity. Okay, great. And what about in the ski schools? How did they cope? Were there any changes there or? Yes, how did there, that, were, how did that? there were. The changes in the ski school were uh, all the children's centres and like, uh, like the kids club areas, parents were not allowed in only pick up and drop off at a specific area and only one parent came to pick up the child and um, drop off and drop off the child and pick up the child. Uh, the all contact tracing details were taken and children were encouraged to regularly hand sanitize, keep their mouth and face covered at things like that. And if they did go into a cafe for a hot chocolate or something like that with the instructor, the kids would be seated and only the instructor would go and get the food out of the hot chocolate or they would get table service just to limit the children's interaction with other people and try and keep them in their own little pod. Okay, great. So overall, it doesn't sound like COVID has had much of an effect beyond that that you might have going into a regular shop in, in London or Geneva or in Verbier. It sounds like basic social distancing, but you've actually had a really busy season. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's been basic social distancing and <clears throat> like everywhere else in the world, but it has been <clears throat> a very busy season. And I think that's because people wanted to get out, do something they can with a family, do something outdoors, do something that's fun and yeah, the thing that they landed on was skiing. A lot of Kiwis, they don't want to travel uh, a long way, but they would drive to, they'd drive from the North Island, take the ferry like you would from the UK. We don't have a tunnel, but we have boats. And then they would drive all the way down here. And then they would uh, stay here for, you know, at least a few weeks and do a lot of skiing. Right. And... That journey, I mean, I've done that journey from, from um, Christchurch to, to Auckland, and it's, it's a long way, isn't it? The ferry is, what, an hour and a half or an hour and a bit, the Picton Fer Ferry? Fer ferry's two hours. And okay. Yeah, I did it uh, earlier in the year, and it's uh, two days. If you want to drive from Auckland all the way to Wanaka or Queenstown, it's good two days of driving. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, brilliant. Well, thanks, Harry. Um, how many? How much more skiing have you got to do? Um, when do the lifts close? Uh, so today is actually official closing day of Treble Cone. However, the snow is so good, they've already come out and said they're going to open next Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And Cadrona are uh, open at this stage for another three to four weeks. Cadrona stays open a long time. They just keep going. Wow. Great. Yeah, it's, well, it's south um, facing and good snow, so it just they just keep it going. That's great. Well, that's cool. That's surpri surprising to learn that it's had so little effect. As I'm sure you know, I think you actually were in Verbio when you when we closed, or you were you were coming. No, we I was. A I few was. Weeks of the season. I was there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I don't think that's going to happen again this year. But it's been really interesting to talk to you about New Zealand and. Enjoy what skiing if you have left. Have you have you taught your last lesson yet, or are you uh, are you done for the season, or are you still working? I'm not too sure. I may have taught my I've taught my last scheduled uh, lesson. Uh, I finished at level two two days ago, and that was my last scheduled lesson or training. But I think maybe I have some things coming up soon. But I wouldn't be surprised if this is it. So I just get to enjoy spring skiing now. Mm, well, enjoy the enjoy the interseason before the 
Northern Hemisphere starts. And uh, thanks a lot for taking the time to talk to us. No problem at all. No problem.